What about real? Why am I so interested in real? Well, really comes from my own town, Plant, right over there. Uh, he was born in New Hampshire. His parents moved to Plymouth in 1825, about. And why did they move to Plymouth? Because they'd been gone broke three times in New Hampshire. So, New Hampshire and Vermont. So, Reilly's parents were pretty bad farmers. So, they tried to make it in three different farms, lost money, and then they went west. Right? Doesn't have anything to do with horse breeders go to West Young Man, but they realized that's what happened. So, they moved from Rutland, Vermont, to Clymer State Line Road over here uh, in 1825. Now, Horace Greeley himself was still beginning his career. He was working for a printer in East Fulton, Vermont, but the printer went bankrupt in 1825. So Horace wanted to go see his mother, so he walked from Rockland, Vermont, to Clymer, New York in 18. And this is part of biographies written about Greeley. Greeley had a biography written in 1857. He didn't die until 1872. Now, try that. It's only read a biography of you 15 years before you die. And then you'll become an important thing. So, uh, but Greeley's first job, he got here, he needed a job, so he liked to write, and so he got a job in Jamestown for a paper, which I don't know if it was the Jamestown Journal, but it was some paper in Jamestown. He worked for a week, wrote stories, and unfortunately they didn't pay him, so he quit. And he went east then to another job. Eventually his first job that became successful in this area was with the Erie Gazette. So the Erie Gazette, I think, still exists in the period of time. And that was really his first job in 1828 or so. Now, where, where, did, where did really his parents move to? Well, let's give you a flavor. They moved to the corner of State Line Road and Cabbage Hill Road. State Line Road being Pennsylvania's on this side, New York is on this side. And if you want to, this is Erie County, Pennsylvania. And that's what it looks like today. Still a dirt road, still not occupied. And that's where the Greeley's rent. That's where Zacchaeus and Mary Woodward, Woodward Greeley migrated to in 1825. Now, how do we know this? Well, the biographers talk about conversations that were had with people in Plymouth in, in, in that period. And here's a, here's a picture of actually the corner in which the Greeley's, and, and Greeley's father wanted to grow sheep, but the wolves were too, too thick, so the wolves would get a sheep. So he was there as a sheep farmer simply because the wolves in this area. And this is still really backward territory. You drive over there and you start up the hill from Clymer to Corey and you go straight to the point toward Corey and that's where this road is. Now just to give you a flavor, really walk from Vermont to western New York. Now why did he walk? Because the Erie Canal didn't start until 1831. So the only way to get here, you maybe couldn't afford it. Well, of course, the only way to get here was that way. Now, when he went back, when he went back to New York, got to New York in 1830, New York City, then he was able to take the Erie Canal because it had been completed. And, but at this time, that's, that's sort of, and here's, this is sort of interesting. This is uh, Zacchaeus Greeley was his father, Mary Woodward Greeley's his mother. This is their uh, tombstone in the Klein Cemetery. Uh, pretty worn away. Died 18, uh, December 18, 1866. Age, uh, I can't read it, 85 years. So he, lived, he was a tough guy. He lived 85 years in that time. But that's Horace Greeley's father. Now, what can, the connection I've not been able to make, because Greeley's libraries and stuff are in Chapel on New York, which is just north of New York City. And the Fenton Center in Jamestown doesn't have information on this. But the connection that I've not been able to make is printed connection between Greeley and Fenton. There's huge printed connection between Greeley and Lincoln. Because really, biographers will point out they have some really interesting things to say about Greeley. Number one, his pleading for the North to, go to, to, to attack the South uh, in 1859, 1860, his pleading to drive the North into the Civil War was really what drove the government to begin, and begin the attacks that led to the Civil War. Of course, there was Fort Sumter in between, but the point was that. Greeley was very warlike, thinking that the plantation owners wouldn't fight. Well, he was completely wrong, but nevertheless, it was his one of his his uh, his drives, and he was very strongly in favor of emancipation, free the slave. So there are marvelous editorials from Lincoln and letters back from Lincoln about freeing the slaves. But his current biographers, Robert Williams and others, 
maintained that he also felt there should be justice for the free slave. So when you connect freedom and justice, what Bob Lenz, who's written the most recent biography, really that I've been able to find, says, is that the connection of justice to freedom uh, was, was something that really pushed very hard for him. And so he wasn't such a bad guy. I mean, his, he, he was very much involved in complaining about the, the Kansas Nebraska Act and very much on, on, on Lincoln's case. And Jeter Isley, a professor at, at uh, Princeton, who's written uh, really in the Republican Party, says in this, these words, really more than any individual misjudged the Southern plantation owner, really felt that if challenged, they wouldn't fight. His readings were unforgiving. Well, after the war, now think about this. You know, local newspaper editor runs for president. So he's sort of got an advantage, right? He can campaign in his paper, and that's what he really did. So 1872, he's nominated by the Liberal Republican Party to become the presidential candidate to run against the incumbent U.S. Grant. And of course, as he's campaigning, he writes editorials about Grant's being broke, Grant's connected to Conklin. And, and all this good stuff. And it was probably all true. But Grant prevailed substantially. He won big time. And if you then go ahead and read the Jamestown Journal about the what happened after the election, so the question becomes, after the election, what do you do with, 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 with this, uh, with this uh, situation with, between the election and the, and, and the uh, Electoral College uh, uh, election? And turned out he really had the good sense to die. So he died, it was in December of 1872. So now all of his electoral votes, what do you do with them? Well, eventually they mostly went to Grant, but he's the only presidential candidate in history to have died before the electoral college. We heard about Gore versus Bush yesterday. Well, I don't know what the Supreme Court would have done with this with the guy dead, but anyway. So now, Henry Shock. Hunter Schock given the picture. Here's Hunter Schock. He was uh, Hitler's banker. He was a very effective banker. He stopped German reparation payments. He was an early Nazi supporter. Uh, he was an extremely good businessman. Schock was Hallmark Horace Greeley. Von Schock. Right? Why was he Horace Greeley Von Schock? Because his father, William, moved to the United States in 1870 or so. His mother, Constanza Manegas, a, a Danish noble woman, followed her husband to be in New York, and they were married in New York uh, in January of 1872, the year of the election. Now he, William, was shot. By the way, shocked is the German pronunciation, Scott is the Dutch pronunciation. And so I tend, because I'm Dutch, to use Scott. It's not right, it should be shocked. But there's a very interesting story about Schäbeningen and Schäbeningen in, in, in Germany and Holland, and how they distinguished Germans from Dutch in the Netherlands in 1944. They said, they said Schäbeningen they were Germans, they said Schäbeningen they were Dutch. But anyway, that's the shock, Scott story. Anyway, uh, his parents moved and were married in New York. His father was unable to make a living, so then William Schock couldn't make a living. Went back to Schleswig Holstein, which is the province or the area. Uh, right next to Denmark, became a teacher in 1878. Uh, Helmar was born. Helmar was going to be Horace Greeley, but it turned out the Danish grandmother set her foot down. He's got to have a Danish name. So Helmar became Helmar Horace Greeley instead of Horace Greeley. So stuff he didn't really need to go with. Not only. 